our next speaker is uh, Massimo Assolini. Uh, I must admit, uh, I don't know where from. Italy, okay. Uh, and uh, his talk is about scalable clone uh, from town-wise sites to region-wise portals and intranets. Uh, and I think you introduce yourself and you've got uh, time announcements and Hello everybody, I'm Massimo Mastolini, I'm uh, CEO for Red Turtle Technology and I work uh, there as a project manager. Red Turtle Technology is based in Ferrara in Italy and uh, we usually work, uh, we deliver web portals, intranets and we also like to um, have consultancy in uh, social environments so we mix uh, clone websites with uh, Facebook, with uh, all this kind of stuff. Um, we also deliver contents. In, what I mean is that uh, we... Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, there are people that write content for our customers. That's important uh, because uh, sometimes happens that customers doesn't know exactly how to act uh, in a CMS. Um, we work in a network of companies. We are ZI, ZI partners. We also have other companies uh, in Italy uh, that uh, are related to us. And uh, uh, we act as a bigger company than a uh, single one. What is this talk about? Today we'll, I will present you some use cases we had uh, from uh, uh, little communes websites. Uh, so tiny cities that has uh, the, um, the need to create a website for their uh, municipality and uh, from bigger websites, uh, big like, uh, um, I think, a, a land in German, right? Something like a region. And uh, we'll see uh, how Plon can be uh, scaled to a um, high available load balanced multi-site uh, multi-skin uh, with uh, several editors and several other features. I would also like you to introduce uh, Plongo Italia, which is uh, um, the Italian branch of an, uh, of an European uh, um, initiative uh, called Plongov, which is Plon uh, talking about uh, government. I will uh, show you in the end of the, of the presentation. First use case is uh, about the tiny town that has uh, the, uh, the need to create a simple website. The, uh, the main fault I did in the past was to think that the, the more I gave them, the best, uh, the more they give, the, 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 it, was, it was best if I give them more, um, more solution, more feature, more of everything. On the other hand, uh, uh, it's better to leverage Plone itself, uh, to use Plone uh, as uh, simple as we can uh, to uh, provide uh, um, simple things, simple features, but uh, that uh, can be used in a, in a proper way, let's say. At the end, uh, they just need uh, events, news, pages, basic Plone contents. They just need a custom theme, uh, maybe a way to customize the home page or other areas. So we provide them portal page, and maybe we need, they need uh, um, some links to social networks and uh, to maps to explain to the people where things are. This kind of situation is uh, um, for a low level traffic. So um, few editors, from one editor to a tiny uh, group of editors, 10, 15 and uh, not, ma not many visits, 10 visits per day, at least a peak of 1,000. So since everything is um, so little, we don't need to create a huge, uh, a huge architecture for Plone. Just use Plone behind the Apache server, so it's in some way protected, and so you can also rewrite through, use the right tools to do something if you need it. No pound, no varnish, anything. Plone 4 is good enough for this kind of uh, situation. Plone App Cache really rocks. This website we built is very fast because it has no 
so much content, uh, it has not so much uh, editors, and everything runs faster and uh, a light clone installation is, is what you need. In, in addition, we uh, uh, set up a few uh, add-ons. First of all, content por uh, portlet page and content web portlets, which are, this one is portlet page that, uh, that let you uh, build on the content of, uh, of the central part of your page, uh, uh, contents from uh, portlets. So you can leverage on uh, uh, static portlets, uh, collection portlets, navigation portlets. That's enough for them to build everything they need. And um, in the, using this add-on, you can uh, use portlet on the bottom of or on the top of your page, and sometimes it can be useful. Uh, we built uh, some uh, advanced navigation portlet where the, the behavior is exactly the same as you are um, used to use in Plone. So this part is the navigation portlet standard. The only uh, addition is this part, the portlet class, which is very useful for the, for the designers because in this way, People can uh, insert here a portlet class, and designer can use that CSS class to change the behavior uh, of the design, the layout of the portlet. So the same portlet can uh, have different layouts in different places. More, uh, the static test portlet is more or less like the one we have in Plone. The difference is that we have uh, a link for the bottom that you can express uh, by your own, and uh, also an internal link because the standard uh, plone uh, static portlet doesn't have it. And uh, of course, uh, the portlet class, like in the portlet, uh, previous portlet. And in this case, we also added some uh, um, pre built uh, CSS. So it, even, it is uh, even uh, easier for a uh, content editor to manage. Uh, uh, their uh, their content. Again, uh, the last thing is the smart link. Uh, ah, all of these uh, products are uh, available on uh, PyPy, so you can uh, download it. Uh, smart link is like a normal smart link, but uh, you can also uh, use an internal link instead of uh, express just an external link. And also, you can uh, change the behavior using uh, uh, an image and a caption image so that uh, you can have a folder with several uh, smart links and you can reorganize your contents just using uh, uh, this new object. And uh, it is very useful for people because in Plus Standard you can have a folder, you can have collections, but you don't have a way to mix together uh, things from other folders and give them a the order you want, not a predefined order. For example, by title, by time, by modified time, by author, or something like that. In this way, you can create a new folder, create uh, smart links, and uh, reorganize your content in the way you prefer. Leveraging the navigation portal, you can also create uh, custom navigation in that points to different uh, places on your uh, website. Using Plon, uh, um, we built a, a great uh, change in the organization of this uh, uh, municipality. The first thing was the awareness. Aver okay, that term. Um, we just did, <laughs> uh, just, did, just did a course for them, and uh, uh, in uh, one day of uh, education, they were able to use Plon. We just uh, uh, educate the educators. So we just had a course for one person, two persons, and uh, um, they were side by side with the guy that did the web portal, so they were able to ask and to practice directly the, in that day. And they, uh, they started to teach to the other people. And that's very important because the um, the people in, the, in their organization wasn't so high, so they can uh, manage the fact to teach to, the, to someone else. And they can also uh, appreciate the fact that uh, 
um, they can learn by doing, not just uh, listening to someone else. And that's very important. The other change was uh, about the fact uh, that uh, uh, they delegated uh, the responsibility to manage the site. What I mean is that in the previous, organization, previous website, there were one person that had the task, the, yes, the task to do everything. People sent them uh, emails and just that. And, uh, and that's what, uh, and that's it. Um, in this new, using Plon, they now are able to create, to create teams. Uh, so they can decide to create a group of people that can uh, uh, work together. Each group has its own area. For example, here there is an area called uh, uh, the Truffle Town. So they can uh, build content about this topic. Or even create uh, um, an area for uh, an office. This is Plum Base plus uh, Portal Page. Nothing. Uh, uh, nothing big, nothing enormous. Everything was extremely simple, and it was extremely simple to understand. The benefits was that we delivered delivered it very fast. Uh, it took what just one month from startup. For me, it was the startup was about uh, was yes the moment the moment when they decided to do the, the website with us and with this te technology. After a month, the website was alive. First, uh, we delivered a basic plum site, basic, with just the feature, without no theme, and they practiced it, practiced it, they started to populate it, and that's it. After a few days, they decided how the graphics, the layout should look like, and we mounted. Uh, of course, because of the fact that Plone is uh, open source, they, now they don't pay any, any fees. And uh, they um, also benefit the fact that the organization was uh, rethinking. So people, there is not just one person that has to do everything, but everyone does a, a tiny task, tiny thing, but everyone, so it is more distributed. On the other side, the, the one we just uh, uh, saw was about a tiny commune. On the other side, there is a huge uh, website for the, our region. Our region in Italy is called Emilia Romagna. Uh, their main issue was about the fact that they had uh, a, pla a proprietary platform, so a profit proprietary CMS made by a company that, uh, okay, they can manage it, they can uh, uh, push it for the future, but come on, the Plum community is bigger. They had a lot of separated websites, so every website uh, worked as a standalone uh, website, and in every website there were a group of uh, editors that acts uh, not coordinated each other. They had a lot of contents, and every website had uh, some features. The country, the, um, we, they had a centralized editing and review. Uh, what I mean is that they were editing uh, in each website and uh, someone else uh, that had to pass each website and to control and review the contents. In this project, we had to improve the, f the flexibility for, um, of the home pages. We leverage it on uh, Portal Page. Uh, it is a great tool for this kind of stuff, and it works both for <coughs> tiny communes and for big organizations. Because at the end, people just need to uh, create a page, or see, even complex, but at the, at the end, a page, nothing uh, so, uh, th yes, they just need to uh, collect uh, um, information, put them together, and that's it. It's not important to bring, give them a, a very complex uh, tool to manage their web uh, homepage. The fact that uh, we provide them uh, custom ports, the, the one we saw be before, and they, uh, we give them uh, the possibility to arrange them, uh, to customize them uh, by themselves, it was a good, a good improvement 
from this solution, uh, from the old solution to, to this solution. In addition, uh, we had uh, to create subsites uh, inside uh, a big plow installation and federated uh, sites, which means sites uh, not inside the same instance, but uh, uh, put outside uh, the principal, the main instance. Again, um, more. We have also areas which is um, a folder object that can contain their folders. The, um, the main, dif main difference is about the fact that uh, they can uh, custom them, uh, putting, for example, a logo or different colors directly from the editor part, not without uh, the need of uh, having a graphic guide that does the job. In, uh, if it's about portrait page, we just uh, uh, customized the way the, the portrait can be uh, put inside the page. Uh, portrait page is made like uh, that. There is four areas. You can put contents in each area. Uh, we customized this uh, behavior so that they can leverage on different uh, portrait manager and they can distribute things in a different way. But that's it, because they have some custom need. And uh, we also uh, customized uh, some, the view of some portlets, so that, for example, these are news, and they can see the news, and also the keyword, the tags associated with that. Other add-ons we need to, to build was, uh, for example, uh, this one, which is uh, related to the council management of, uh, of the town. So the, we need to uh, give them a tool uh, that uh, can be used just for this purpose, because they cannot, weren't able to use a standard clone, but nothing more. And also we uh, added tools like social like uh, add-ons, and uh, since uh, um, they already had the Google search appliance, because in their architectures there were this plenty of uh, websites, they leveraged the search on Google search appliance, so we needed to integrate it. I will talk about uh, it later. Um, again, uh, we just needed to uh, provide them custom policies for fine-tuning uh, uh, you know the portals can be managed by uh, a manager of the website. On the other hand, uh, you need to uh, let people to put uh, portals in every part of your website, because otherwise they are not be able to do uh, stuff like that. So we just need to create custom policies. We also provide them uh, anonymous view at RTPulge. They are quite useful for them because um, you build the uh, the view, the, the page by your own, but you are not uh, seeing exactly what an anonymous view, uh, viewer will see. So th we just provide them this uh, add-on. And RTPurge is a, uh, a way to purge the varnish cache so that I'm just making a modification and after a while I need to put it on, uh, on the website on a public way. It happens when uh, the management needs to say to people, now this happens. And you can't wait uh, that the cache in uh, Varnish uh, is going to get invalidated. They also use uh, singing and dancing for newsletter, and we created an add-on for them because singing and dancing has this behavior so that you can manage it from an administration point of view. So one manager, or a set of managers in a way, but a manager for portal, but portal, but since we have uh, syndicated portals, federated uh, portals, and so on, we need to create a, a newsletter, a local newsletter. And uh, singing, and dance, singing and Dance is not able to do that. Using Collecting Dance Floor, you can uh, in some way do it. Um, if it's about the newsletter, right now we are more focused on MailChimp, which is not a plone uh, uh, add-on, which is a... It's a website, uh, an application on the web that provides newsletter. It's more advanced than any other newsletter in Plone. And we are going to try to integrate them in, with Plone. So 
the content from Plone can be used also in Manchu. For doing this kind of uh, web portal, the architecture is very important. Uh, the main problem is that uh, it cannot fail. Uh, so what we did is uh, they have uh, IIS in front of everything because it, it's uh, a choice of, all, of, their, of theirs. Uh, we provide them three servers. Now here I just put two of them, but they are exactly the same. Every server has the same architecture. So we have an Apache on the front end, then uh, behind it uh, a varnish, and then pound to balance the, um, the request and uh, pound balances the we request on for um, Zio client but also on all the other Zio client we have on the other machines so it tries uh, to leverage four four and four so twelve uh, Zio client every Zio client relies on a cluster red hat where there is a Zio server with the ZODB this means that if this stack goes down for any reason, for maintenance or uh, even because uh, something is going to fail, this one is already up and running and it's just a matter of switching IAS from this one to this one and this made uh, uh, automatically by them. This part uh, is uh, always available because it's, a, it's in a cluster so we don't uh, um, have any problem if it's about uh, uh, avail uh, the availability. We also decided to, um, of course, use Blob, but also to partition uh, the ZODB because uh, there are parts of the ZODB that you want to cache, let's say, uh, forever, or even not forever, but uh, only in the um, RAM memory. And other parts that you can because other the ZODB is too big. So something is cached for center period in the RAM. Other parts, for example, the catalog is better to have it on the RAM all the time. So we partition it and uh, we leverage, leverage it on this uh, feature. I said that we need to deliver always and we need to deliver it also fast. Um, this kind of uh, websites have peaks of access uh, during the election days because everyone wants to see uh, how things are going. And in these moments, we have uh, seven hits per second, and even uh, 15 hits per second. So we try, we try to uh, share it because we uh, wanted to see if our architecture was uh, good enough. And uh, it was good enough at the end. Uh, we also tested it for until 50 concurrent users. And uh, we base it on uh, resources.txt file, which is a list uh, of URLs that uh, the, the, the shares should uh, call. It's quite easy to get it. You can navigate a few pages. Uh, for example, use a firebug. You can extract all the calls uh, done by the page and put it into a txt file. In this way, using shares, you can uh, Tell him, uh, okay, try to act as uh, if uh, 10 people, 20 people, and so on, is trying uh, to uh, connect to your website uh, in a concrete way. And you can see how it uh, reacts. It degrades, of course, gracefully. It means that the 95% of all the requests are um, solved, let's say, in uh, five, six, seven, six seconds at least. Of course, that 100% uh, may have uh, even 10 seconds to get uh, processed. We talked about subsites. When we really need a subsite, the first uh, question you have to ask is uh, if you really need uh, um, a subsite, or you, if you are just need a, an external, external clone site, I mean uh, another instance. If you need to create an architecture when, where uh, you have to link uh, contents from one site to another site, or for a huge site to a subsite, or things like that, it's a good uh, approach to have a subsite. 
Also, if you want to co create collections that uh, grabs contents from subsite to a bigger subsite, a bigger site. And also, if you want to find documents that are not only in the current subsite but also in other subsites. In addition, you probably want to have uh, a custom theme for every subsite. <coughs> You want that the visitor uh, navigate your website uh, using uh, domains, uh, URLs like domains.com, the subsite, or subsite.com, or this way. Um, in addition, the visitor should not be aware of, that, of the fact that uh, he's visiting a, a subsite. Uh, no, sorry. He should not be aware of the fact that he's visiting a big site separated in several subsites. For him, the navigation was, uh, should be only inside the, this subsite. The ca site contribut contributor, on the other hand, should uh, be able to act on every contact of the uh, environment of subsites. So, for example, this one uh, is the um, root of the website from the back-end point of view, and uh, these uh, folders are effectively in, in an actually uh, subsites. How we did it? We create a product that just uh, uh, put a marketing interface uh, on uh, some of these folders. When uh, you navigate the website from the back-end, he completely ignores the marker and it acts like if it, uh, if it is a normal website. When you navigate through the domain, it also applies uh, a, a theme. And inside that theme, there is a, a control that says, if the mark, there is a marker inside uh, this folder, OK, set uh, another, in, another interface to the folder that is iNavigation root, which is the normal way to say to prone, this is a subsite. Also, Lineage does this. Uh, instead of using uh, Retarto subsite, subsite, you can use Lineage. The main difference is that in Lineage, you are marking uh, the folder as a subsite. So when you enter the folder, you are on a subsite in any way. Using this way, you c it depends on the way you are accessing that folder. If you are accessing from the subsite point of view, you are on a subsite. If you are accessing it uh, from a backend point of view, you are on a huge, bigger uh, site. Okay. Uh, you can find more infos uh, on PyPy. Uh, Retarto subsite has a good documentation if it's uh, uh, about how to use it, how to leverage it. And uh, we also wrote uh, a blog post. Uh, unfortunately, since it's in Italian, but Google Translate uh, uh, does miracles. So the main benefit is that the backend interface uh, completely uh, hides the subside behaviors. So if you are a normal editor, you don't see the fact that there are subsites. You act like uh, there is a huge site. The front interface, on the other hand, is just uh, um, just shows you the subsites. It's quite easy to add the subsites because it's just a, a matter of applying a, an interface. And uh, the last thing is that the subsites are activated dynamically. So, so if you are acting from the subsite point of view, it uh, behaves like that. Otherwise, no. Um, for this. Uh, uh, for this customer, we built uh, this uh, um, environment of sites, subsites, and so on. But uh, they also needed an, um, an intranet, uh, again, based on Plone. This intranet uh, is based on uh, two components. Uh, they are not exactly two components. They are the, it's more about the behavior they have. One behavior is uh, internos. Internos is an Italian term that uh, more or less can be translated in uh, between us, in uh, this uh, in this room. And uh, it's uh, uh, more about distributing contents. So a normal internet documentation, internet as we are used to to, to it. 
It has a user dashboard. It has the possibility to bookmark uh, things. Uh, you have a Mercatino, which is a market, uh, internal market, the same, and a way to ask the expert about topics. The other behavior is um, more related to group work. So you have uh, a topic to talk about in a uh, single group of people, and it's quite closed. You, you can even more very private. And uh, uh, you need tools uh, to, to talk about this topic. Since we already uh, deploy it, uh, since we already uh, thought the, the architecture, we just leverage on the same identical ar uh, architecture. Internos uh, is, the, is a plum uh, standard installation with uh, a custom team or the usual add-ons when usual is, uh, is a set of add-ons we already talked about. We have 7,000 uh, registered users. Not all of them are active uh, uh, in the same moment, but we, we can more or less arrive at 10% of uh, this number in every moment. We use Active Directory so we can uh, uh, access uh, the um, standard way of, uh, of authentication of the customer. And it is a uh, documentation internet. It's based on, uh, no, we leverage on uh, dashboard management quite uh, sophisticated, let's say. Um, we use the standard clone dashboard, but uh, in addition to it, uh, we can, uh, we are able to push portlets to the dashboard of the user, and uh, one of the columns of the dashboard is always. Uh, shown uh, on the left part of the website. This means that for them, uh, they can push uh, um, content not just on the dashboard of the user, but on every page of the internet. And uh, this changes a lot, because otherwise your content uh, are seen just uh, if uh, the user goes to the dashboard. Otherwise, in this way, you can um, provide them the information in any moment even if he's, he's navigating in other parts. Uh, the Marketino is about uh, um, an announcer board. So I can put my announcement, uh, someone, uh, someone else can decide to buy, to contact me, a very, very tiny eBay in some way. Uh, book crossing, on the other hand, is about uh, uh, exchange of books uh, between people inside the organization. Since there are 7,000, uh, they find it very useful. The, oops, the group where uh, I will go quickly because I'm late. Um, the group is about uh, talking about a topic. So we just provide them a way to create a new group. Inside the group, they can uh, uh, create a set of predefined doc uh, objects, so documents, events, news, uh, plum boards, so a forum. Uh, they can create a blog. They can create uh, a project, so a stream, you, we are using stream management, which is a standard plan uh, add-on, and uh, uh, surveys. This means that a manager, we, we, we have four roles, managers, editors, collaborators, and guests. Using these groups, uh, we can put people inside the groups, and the manager can do it through an interface and not uh, inside the group area and, non, and not with the the standard clone uh, groups interface, so it's easier for them. Uh, the manager can delegate tasks to others, and uh, the, this, uh, these roles uh, act locally. A killer feature, which is, uh, mm, usually we don't uh, use it, but uh, having comments on every object uh, moves the focus from the uh, conversation to the object. Uh, sometimes uh, people tend to use emails to exchange information. Using comments and forcing people to use comments, we move the focus from the email uh, application to the internet application. And people are more uh, on the internet than on uh, the email. The level of, of email exchanged uh, uh, went down. Uh, I think we don't have so much time. <laughs> OK. I, I would run. Uh, this is a way to create uh, 
bulletin for uh, low standards and so on. Uh, it was quite expensive, and we rebuilt it uh, again using Plone and uh, um, uh, building some archetypes uh, and uh, uh, exchanging with uh, InDesign uh, XML that creates uh, that pass it to InDesign. Um, give back as uh, a PDF in a, a PDF A format, uh, and we can we are able to sign it uh, using a strong certificate. Um, this means that every uh, content uh, that usually has been has to be provided through a paper uh, can be uh, translated into an electronic way, and uh, it saves uh, tons of paper, of course, millions of euros, and uh, actually that. The most important uh, was about the fact that they now don't need to um, to print things. They just use Plon to uh, to provide this information. Okay. <laughs> I have other things about multimedia, but I'll um, okay. I will skip. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for this. Uh, I I think that was very um, a very impressive uh, deployment uh, and uh, very very detailed. And I think there must be some questions on that. Perhaps I'm wrong. <laughs> Subsites, uh, we have sub teams, so we can change teams with the main site, and it is not pro problematic. Um, yep. uh, no, the, the exchange uh, is not problematic. What we did uh, is to create uh, a set of themes, and uh, um, we activate it uh, on the Apache side, so they are all available for the for the customer. The matter is about the fact that if you navigate uh, uh, domain.com uh, on the Apache configuration, you pass an environment variable that sets the, the team to, to be shown, and that's it. So it's quite easy for them to, to change it. Yeah. OK, anyone else? So the talk was very clear and detailed enough. No, nobody has a question, and uh, uh, perhaps uh, afterwards. Okay. Thank you again, and.